Uh, today, my goal is twofold. I would like to introduce the European project called ASAP and is totally in line with uh, the title of this presentation. And my second goal today is to advertise a LiDAR product that is uh, interesting and is uh, uh, can be used uh, during uh, uh, for the monitoring of volcanic plumes. So first things first. ESAPE stands for Eurogeos, showcases applications powered by Europe, and is a unique initiative that brings together decades of investment in uh, earth observations, empowering services for decision makers, citizens, industry, and researchers. Uh, under this project, there are 27 cloud based pilot applications, understand seven thematic areas, and address uh, societal changes, foster entrepreneurship, and support sustainable development. So these thematic areas cover topics from agriculture to disasters to water. So it's a multidisciplinary uh, project. Uh, the project, uh, the, the showcase that we are dealing with is the disasters. Uh, showcase is the showcase number six, and the goal of that uh, showcase is to develop a portfolio of services for the protection of citizens, economies, and ecosystems against natural and induced disasters. Uh, showcase six uh, comprises four pilots. We have the pilot number one, and our title is Earth Observation Data for Detection, Discrimination, and Distribution of Volcanic Ash. Some of our, and probably the most important goals are to strengthen the earth observation data exploitation, and as well as to integrate the multi-source data. Uh, the pilot is led by Lucia Mona, present here today, and uh, we have uh, on board six partners that we work in a consortium and we, we try to achieve our mutual goals. And uh, I will move on with a bit of background information. I guess that most of you, you are very well familiar with what I'm going to show you, but I, I think that it gives a nice uh, flow to this talk today. So, of course, volcanic eruptions present an imminent threat for aviation. <clears throat> the particles can cause a variety of damage inside and outside an aircraft. So, they are, of course, a hazard, and acknowledging this hazard, since 1991, ICAO and WMO have set up uh, nine volcanic advisory centers uh, with a mandate to operate a 24-7 uh, service. Uh, in Europe, we have two VACs. We have VAC London and VAC, uh, VAC Toulouse that they, they monitor the European uh, airspace. I move now with our motivation and I'm going to do that through, through an example. So. On 9 of April, I move away from Etna. I will go to, to the Caribbean, uh, where there was an explosive eruption of uh, La Soufrière that, that created havoc in the aviation industry during uh, the month of April. And actually, it made, it to, it made uh, nice headlines in, in the news, la news outlets all over the world. So, VAC Washington that uh, observes that part of the globe has the, as it has the mandate to, to release information and disseminate information, released uh, advisories in terms of uh, this TXT file that you can see on the left-hand side and on, uh, that they contain information regarding uh, the when and where uh, happened uh, the, their action. And as well as it uh, informs us in terms of uh, graphical uh, maps, as you can see on the right-hand side, where there you can see the dispersal of the plume and the, these polygons uh, here indi indicate, uh, indicate the area where, uh, where airplanes are not allowed to fly uh, within. So from this example, many things come out, many of the challenges and many of the issues that are open. For instance, the VAX update information every six hours. So we know that we have six hours of no information. The VAX have low vertical resolution uh, with maps focusing only on three high levels. They do not inform on the SO2 clouds that they can be equally disastrous for aviation. Uh, model assimilation is not part of the standard procedures, although most of the VAX are able to perform 
uh, assimilation. And uh, there are a lot of other information sources that they are not acknowledged uh, from VAX and not only VAX. But you will think that what we do, our, our pilot is about, uh, is not about, we don't want to replace uh, VAX. We, we just want to, to show different ways to, to, to we, we want to provide a new a solution to these kinds of challenges. But also we have identified different kinds of challenges. As we know, we live in a data rich era, although in 2010, where we had this aviation crisis that somehow collapsed the whole industry, demonstrated that data during an eruption can, are not available although they exist, are not findable, are not coherent and consistent, are not well integrated, not tailored for users. And as I come from the LIDAR community, I can tell you that the vertical dimension uh, is not considered in the whole chain of, uh, uh, of uh, response. So the pilot, very briefly, is focused, of course, on volcanic ash. We, we don't... We don't uh, begin from scratch. We don't start from scratch. We build on the legacy of another European project called Unadix AV that has ended. And again, it had the same goal as, as we do uh, now. Uh, so our objectives, I will only tell you only about our main objective, which is to prototype a system to integrate multi-source data and provide the aviation community with uh, tailored information. As you might understand, the outcome of of our work will be a 4D visualization platform. In a nutshell, uh, if this okay. So we have on the one hand we have our data sources, we have ground-based information, we have satellite, of course, we have volcanic observatories, and we have model data. So we have our database where there we okay. As you might understand, of course, these data sets are extremely heterogeneous. So therefore, we need to homogenize the data. We need to transform the data whenever they need to be transformed. We have also the data exchange, where with data exchange, I mean that you, you, you should consider that there is a, an interplay between these data sources as information from Gallic observatories is important for the model initiation, for instance, with source parameters, or even to perform models, they need uh, to perform a simulation, they need uh, satellite or ground-based. So we need to have this constant movement al along uh, the data sources, and finally we have archive and transfer. Transfer to the platform where there someone, a user, can access and uh, have uh, the 4D distribution of the volcanic plume, and as well as there we can also disseminate forecasts and other alert uh, products. So far we've managed more or less to, out of this three box, uh, three box block, three blocks so we have managed to more or less to uh, do the second now we have we have built our database we we know we have automated all the procedures in order to have this uh, seamless flow of data to the database and from the database in, in a later stage we will have the visualization platform but now i would like to tease you with uh, this movie this movie shows uh, a platform that was realized for the Unadix AV project that I mentioned before. And this somehow this platform encompasses with our vision of how a user centric approach should be, uh, that it shouldn't be data centric, it should be user centric, it should be dynamic, it should be at all times accessible by the user, whoever might be, where there someone could could have uh, the information from ground-based, for instance, could have the information from the volcanic observatories, could have the information from models, the, the, uh, and, and also what, what the, every other uh, product is available. But now as the time uh, you know, is constraining us, I would like now to change gears and move to uh, a product that we have developed and somehow it is uh, in line with the, with the presentation that Alessia gave before. So we have developed a methodology that uses LNET, high resolution data for, for an LN1 system for volcanic dust and desert dust. It's simple enough that and it uses only a single wavelength with uh, polarization information, of course. And the idea behind also, apart from using it throughout LNET is also that this can be applied to other networks such as 
uh, MPL net or everywhere else, if you think of another network in the world. So practically we estimate the particle backscatter, the particle depolarization as the flow charts in, in the below graph shows, you can estimate the cost backscatter. And then of course we have thresholds on backscatter that they are directly linked with the uh, aerosol mass concentration in the atmosphere. And out of these, we can have actually three, 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 three different alerts. We have low, medium and high. Of course, this work has been published last year, but we, we continue to work on that. And we, we, were, uh, we were really interested into how we will discriminate ash and dust as, the, as these two uh, aerosol types, they have more or less similar uh, properties. So we thought of to use Aeronet. Aeronet, of course, has no limitations, but using the imaginary refractive index, we could separate these two uh, aerosol types. So this is an example of how this is a dust intrusion over Crete in 2018, 21 March of 2018. This is all the products that we can deliver. And on the bottom right graph, you can see uh, the, the alert uh, for uh, desert dust and volcanic ash to aviation. So, and this is my final slide. I think I'm on time. If So very briefly, we, of course, we, we need to keep in mind that LIDARs are super nice to give vertical profiles. Of course, we are inhibited by several factors such as the geographical coverage that we only for our methodology we have elastic channels. Assumptions, of course, are part of the game. We don't discriminate, as I told you, volcanic dust and desert dust. And of course, the challenge as here, I'm talking about what will be in case of uh, attenuation of the LiDAR signal due to, for instance, low clouds or opaque aerosol, uh, uh, aerosol clouds that may, they may come out from uh, a vol volcano. And my last word here today is that, of course, our tailored project, we think that it could act as a pre-electing tool and uh, for aviation, and we could pinpoint the specific uh, aerosol conditions. Thank you for your time. And that's all by my side.